Hey everyone, welcome to Dental Diary. This is Arcadia Safari. I these days go by Arc. So today in this video, I would like to share some important information for dental students uh, listed by Dr. Duggan. It's all his copyright and the link uh, to his website, which is web uh, slash dds.org. You will find in the description of this video However, it's a text page and not everyone, every dental student will know about it and it's not advertised. This is why I want to read it out loud on YouTube so that with search algorithms, um, at least if one or five dental students read it, that would make difference. So um, I will not introduce who Dr. Duggan is. Um, you can read about him also in the description of this video. Basically, he's a great dentist who have uh, been uh, teaching a lot of uh, graduates of dental schools, a lot of prospective students of dental schools in the United States and educating patients, uh, basically uh, showing what ideal dentistry is, long story short. Uh, so here we go, the letter for dental students. The link will be in the description. The biggest fear you are the pivotal point in your dental career. As you build towards graduation, you must think about how confident you'll be at graduation from the dental school. Your confidence will be based on, not on wishful thinking or on doing what you're asked to do in the program, but on what many procedures you have done on patients how much attention you pay to every detail of what do you do on patients and on knowing the fundamental principles that differentiate between good dentistry and dentistry that is doomed to fail. Ultimately, your success as a dentist is determined by how much you care by success above. I don't mean financial success. I mean, Whatever or not the procedures you do successfully solve the patient's problems, you meet their needs long term. That is, after all, our job. Our job is not to establish a practice where we have lots of patients and our staff gets well paid and we take home a nice profit and at the end of every month, it's fine if we do these things, but it's a secondary concern. Uh, true, we can help our patients if we don't have a working and profitable practice from which to do so, but um, that is the means, not the end. As students, you are trained to pay attention to the details because it is the small details that determine clinical success or failure. Even a 0.5 millimeter mistake can cause premature failure of our work for the patient. If you truly understand how small errors can compromise life expectancy of our work and you care to do your best for each patient, the potential is there to do good dentistry and to do it for the rest of your career. If you do not have a profound understanding or failing errors, even if you care, you may be able to do good work by rote once you're in private settings, but you can expect the quality of your work to degrade over the years. I once worked with a practicing dentist who was running a successful office for 25 years, but he was not happy in his practice. It turned out it was because he didn't know if he was doing good work for his patients. He simply had no ability to judge, no landmarks or standards to use to evaluate his work. But since he cared, he felt bad in a way that he didn't fully understand. As we worked together, me and him, uh, he started to see more because he knew what to look for now and his skills improved. He became far happier and started enjoying his practice again and started teaching part-time at a dental school. 
The last paragraph is a cautionary tale. We shall see if we can keep this form happening to you. Next chapter, finding safety. If you are afraid of ending up like this guy, I described above, unhappy in your practice, there are two things you can do to avoid that. One, really internalize a profound sense of how dentistry works, or two, don't care about your patients. Are you shocked? I sincerely hope so. Last month, I spent some time at three different dental laboratories video recording the cases that had been submitted from local dentists. I recorded impressions, stone models, and articulated sections and trimmed dyes. I studied the work at about 50 practicing dentists. What I saw made it very clear that the skills of all these dentists had degraded since graduation from school. I can put this in perspective for you. I have been making uh, these videos to, to use uh, in a program I'm describing to calibrate dental school faculty. I had made two videos already showing rejected clinical crown impressions taken by dental students where I was on the faculty. None of the impressions uh, taken by the dentists practicing for 10 to 30 years were at the level of quality of the student work. So here's a comparison. Notably, the lab technician told me that few of their client dentists use impression cord when taking impressions. And so only few. And they suspected, suspected that often the assistant takes the impressions, which is generally illegal. Safety in your professional career comes from uh, knowledge and caring. Chapter three, what can you do? As dental students, you must realize first that your primary teachers are your patients. Faculty will help you with fundamentals and guide you, but it is the experience you can only get from doing complex procedures on people that makes you who you are. Most students, I'm sorry, most schools provide adequate access to the clinic so you can do many procedures on many patients, but you may have to supplement the patients available through the school, which uh, with uh, those you bring in the, uh, from outside the school. So go out and get patients. These are online, online sites like Craigslist, where you can advertise free dental screenings done at the school Sunday afternoon, if possible. Arrange with the dean to have a junior faculty member assigned to cover the screening clinic. Make the deal that you have first choice to work on any patient that responds to your ad and that the graduate prosthodontics department can have a um, second choice. Find complex cases like you will find in your practice. You can learn so much more from a patient needing six crowns than one needing just one. If the school wants to assign you a patient who needs one filling, find patient that needs 15 fillings. Chapter four, your school patient base. I was graduated from dental school in 1992. Of my class of 100 students, there were none that didn't feel confident. Um, I'm not sure if 1992 is a correct uh, year of graduation, but anyway, uh, there were none uh, that didn't feel confident that they could practice independently right out the door. Nobody went to get more clinical experience in a GPR or AGD program. 30 years later, most graduate feel they need more, but this is not necessary, necessarily the case if you take control of your patient base. I have thought occasionally about publishing my patient treatment record from 
when I was a student. It provided me a great foundation from which to practice on my own and the lessons I learned from my patients were lifetime lessons. Some of my students' cases are shown in this website. Uh, see the DI case in Dentistry for Kids, comma, the case illustrated in the chapter of full mouth rehabilitation and illustrations in the chapter of gold onlays. You can do interesting and complex cases in dental school as I did, but you need to exert yourself and get the cases to do. It's a one-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so take advantage of it. Chapter 5. The site can help you. There are myriad patients um, and patient situation discussed and illustrated that are far more personally presented than for a textbook. This is more a memoir than a textbook, but written for the general public primarily. What the general public understands about dentistry, you need to understand too. If patients realize that not all dentists care to do adequate work, you need to realize that as well. As the ideal or optimal approaches um, are discussed in this site, you need to know that many dentists will deliberately deviate from um, this for their own benefit. I simply want you to not walk out of dental school and be blindsided by your naviet um, as I was. Yes, I was. I hasn't to the point out that I have known many incredible dentists in practice, many that I admire greatly, but you must know that not all are admirable. Chapter six, my associateship. I worked nine months for a dentist who had just bought his first practice while I was building my own office. He knew I was on the faculty of the school from which he was graduated, and yet he allowed me to see his strategy for working with patients to maximize his own personal profit. For example, he showed me how to place a class 5 composite so it would fall out. He said you shouldn't tell the patient how difficult it is to restore these areas, for example, small fraction lesions. Well, and if it does fall out, he'll try to um, again um, to, to, to try again at his coast, but if it fell out again, he'd have to do a crown. One day on my day running the practice, he had 25 year old guy come in for crowns and 12 and on, on number 12 and number 13 teeth. I couldn't see anything significantly, significantly wrong with this teeth. I asked the patient and he said it was because the composite fell, uh, kept falling out. Yep, from really small class fives. I did the class five that are probably still there today and sent him home that day. That night I got an irate call from the owner, but I was ready to be fired if he wanted. He didn't but I quit. Just today, I was teaching a student that shared one of his experiences shadowing a dentist in his practice. He observed that the dentist looked up the amount of money that was left on each patient's insurance coverage for the year and tailored the treatment plan to match this amount. Again, I do not mean to imply that dentists taking as a whole are less ethical than any other profession. But I'm always saddened that I so often hear about dentists who seem to care more about themselves that, than their patients. There should be no dentist like this in practice. One is already too many. Chapter uh, six, I believe, uh, your future. Now, many of you will go to work for corporate dentistry. In fact, this may be the most likely way to get a job with adequate and consistent pay to manage your student loans. 
Now, it might be a good idea for you to read now the chapter of the business of dentistry. It will provide some more perspective for what you are about to read. Perhaps you have some sense of what dental practice is or maybe about in the real world. Maybe your father or your mother runs a practice, but they do not have $300,000 plus student loans to pay back and never did. You probably do. In this chapter, I outline what private practice entails from a small sole practitioner office to multi-dentist office and multi-office practices. And there is the possibility of corporate dentistry, uh, either a corporation owned group practices or offices managed by dental support organizations. I elaborate the possibilities in this area carefully in that chapter available to the public because patients need to know something of the burden you work under too. Corporate dentist, dentistry, especially the in uh, DSO practices, will seem to make sense. You earn, uh, you can earn about uh, $175,000 per year right out the door, and there is no other way to do that. Sounds attractive. And again, um, I'm gonna pause here. So this article was written a little bit uh, a few years uh, prior to the, as I'm reading it, so uh, it's kind of, it has to be updated uh, for the costs. So let's say 300,000 uh, 300, loan is already bigger. Once you finish dental school, it's uh, around half a million, right? So same, you can do even more and more. So multiply a little bit, okay? Add up to these numbers in your head. So you can earn 175,000 per year right out the door and there is no other way to do that. Sounds attractive? Well, the problem is that the contract you sign is about 200 pages. This is serious business and a con contractual responsibility you must not take lightly. And I know of no 26 year old that has the experience to evaluate such a contract well. I talked with an attorney that helps dentists evaluate their contracts and he charged about $5,000 for the service. Depending on the corporation, your homework in this regard could save you a lot of headache, heartache. You should know, however, that these are DSOs that really do have the best interest of the patients and their providers at heart. And uh, the mandate of the DSO can allow for the provision of quality dentistry to those that would otherwise not be able to afford good care. Still, you may well spend five to seven years doing corporate dentistry. I'll just point out one thing here that you should know of a practice nature. Corporate or DSO dentistry is production-based based in these larger practices there is more flexibility for learning on the job and some organizations have significant education programs but your daily production is crucial to your success now how does one achieve high production one efficient office layout instrument management and dental assisting two work in multiple chairs three adequate anesthesia four patient comfort Five, communicate fully with patients ahead of appointment. Six, excellent isolation. Seven, insightful scheduling. Eight, clear picture of strategies for preparation and restoration. Nine, taking time to evaluate each step of work and modify and if necessary to subsequent steps go more quickly. 10, doing things again if necessary so that you don't build more complexities in subsequent procedures. 11. Don't cut corners. 12. Appropriate impressions with clear margins and meaningful bite registrations where necessary. <coughs> Excuse me. Isn't it interesting that sometimes you get things done faster by taking your time? Good judgment allows high production and patient satisfaction both short and long term. 
how does one learn to work fast? No, certainly not by cutting faster and uh, with less awareness. It's all about strategy, having a good subsequence uh, sequence of steps to complete procedures and knowing what it takes to get each step done well before proceeding to the next. An ideal class two preparation can be done in less than two minutes using the same sequence of steps as a less experienced person would require half an hour. It's a matter of completing each step before proceeding to the next. Can you learn to work more efficiently and quickly in dental school? Yes, with determination and a good patient base. Then you can potentially thrive in DSO dentistry because you will not have to compromise your standards or develop standards that are fictional or fictitious. Uh, you may even go to a school where they have a program where uh, you can learn by working with experienced dental assistant. Make good use and why not cooperate with a fellow student that has no patience so you can practice working with an assistant. So you can use that student as an assistant. Another thing you can do to increase your speed is practice preparations on a typodont. Once you get the strategy and flow and finish each step completely with good judgment, your work should speed up many fold. Next chapter, I believe chapter seven, clinical questions to ponder. If you have trouble getting a good impression with PVS materials or anything else, you will get a better one digitally, question mark. The lab I was at um, last week, hope that they get better impressions when more dentists go digital or optical. I think this is a hope this, uh, de destined for disappointment. Another lab I visited recently uh, receives many digital impressions from dentists online and their experience is that most dentists don't get a usable one for the first year. The problems careless dentists have with impressions in is their margins. If the margins are not clear of the tissue and dry, if they're not dry, clear, an accurate or even meaningful impression is impossible, no matter how done. For a digital option, uh, for a digital impression that needs for dryness is even greater because of the powder. If, a, if, if, if this is an old powder method, which is probably not used today, that is sprayed onto the preparation to increase reflexity, must be dry. So Dr. Duggan here talking about the, dry, the, the um, first versions of CERC machines. Any cric, cric, cricular fluid, gum fluid, that is allowed to cross the margins will ruin the impression accuracy in that area. Um, next point. When should you be sure not to use any ceramic or on the entire occlusal surface of a crown? Consider a 17 year old girl patient that grinds her teeth and needs a crown on number 19. What would you do? Next point is that when I say ceramic, uh, what do you think I'm talking about? Feldspathic porcelain, lithium disilicate, zirconia, yttra dob zirconia, did you know that the preparations for these may not be as similar as you were thinking? Did you know that many dentists just assume that no matter how thin the ceramic is even at the facial margin, the technician may make a crown that looks good without compromising the periodontium? Do you think that is true? Is it more true for some ceramic uh, materials than others? Uh, next point, what determines the abrasivity, uh, abrasivity of the ceramic on the opposing teeth? Are there, are, are there any ceramics that are significantly less abrasive than others? Have you seen research studies where measurements were done with small statistical errors and significant differences due to excellent experimental design? And uh, next point, do you know how to adhesively bond a ceramic to good structure? 
considering that many preparations in clinical practice are converging occlusally at 40 to 60 degrees, and many are short, adhesive technology must be used at its best. And not all ceramics can be adhesively bonded the same way. Uh, final point that doc Dr. Duggan gives here. There are many more questions that I will ask you as time goes by, but for now, let's leave it here. If you write uh, to me by email, and I will leave his email in the description, um, and have questions, I may well address your generally helpful issues here so other can benefit. Feel free, don't hesitate to write Dr. Duggan and uh, uh, take his courses. And uh, uh, recently he started a Udemy educational channel uh, for evaluating different preparations. So um, also subscribe to his YouTube channel um, and uh, uh, make sure you visit his uh, live courses uh, and uh, private, uh, private trainings in uh, his um, uh, Duggan uh, oral design uh, school. Uh, please subscribe to this channel and uh, I, uh, I've been taking two courses with Dr. Duggan and the experience he gives is significant and uh, I would say unique even, even from most of dental schools. Uh, and uh, like, like and comment what, what, what else would you like to, to hear. Uh, on this channel. Thank you. Take care.